Let's start our discussion of this chapter, which primarily concerns alkenes, their structure and reactivity. So what is an alkene? It's a hydrocarbon with a carbon-carbon double bond. Also called an olefin, but alkene is more descriptive. Now, alkenes are really useful in that they can be derivatized to make a range of potential products. So alkenes are really useful building blocks as they can be modified and derivatized to make a range of useful materials. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about unsaturated hydrocarbons. So hydrocarbons with multiple bonds are considered unsaturated. Both alkenes and alkynes are unsaturated hydrocarbons with the alkene functional group being a carbon-carbon double bond and alkyne is a carbon-carbon triple bond. Now we can estimate the number of multiple bonds or rings using the formula for degree of unsaturation. This is a formula that you will want to devote from, to memory because it's not only useful in the context of this chapter, but it's very useful when we get to structure determination. So the formula for a saturated acyclic compound is known as CnH2n plus 2. An alkene has fewer hydrogens, but the same number of carbons, so it has the formula CnH2n. Now, the general idea behind degree of unsaturation is every ring or multiple bond will replace two hydrogens. So for every two hydrogens missing, there's one degree of unsaturation. So the general formula looks something like this. But if there are no halogens, nitrogen, or oxygen atoms, we can use this simpler formula for degree of unsaturation, which is written as 2 times the number of carbons plus 2 minus the number of hydrogens divided by 2. And remember, 1 du corresponds to 1 double bond or ring. Does this concept look familiar? We talked about du way at the beginning of the class. Does this idea of degree of unsaturation looks familiar? Yeah. Perfect. So let's showcase how we'd calculate degree of unsaturation. So for ethylene, which is C2H4, our du would be 2 times 2, plus 2, minus 4, over 2. And that gives us a du of 1. And as we see, how many double bonds do we have? Just the one. Just one, exactly right. Well, ethane, for our du, we have 2 times 2, plus 2, minus 6, over 1, which gives us a du of 0. So as we notice, there are no double bonds in ethane. It's called saturated. This is the same terminology used in saturated versus unsaturated fats. OK, so let's look at C6H10. So saturated would be C6H14. So for C6H10, we would, ex we would calculate a du of 2. So just to show that one more time, we have six carbons times two plus two minus 10 over two. That gives us a du of two. Now, that du of two opens up a range of possible structures. We can have two double bonds, a ring and a double bond, two rings, or even a triple bond. So all of these structures here have a du value equal to two. So, DU is a useful tool for highlighting and at least restricting the amount of possible structures you have to consider for a given formula. And that's really useful when we get to our chapters on structure determination. As the more you can narrow down your structure, the easier a job you're going to have. 
So usually additional data is provided that allows you to elucidate the structure or parts of the structure of the product can be inferred from the reaction conditions or other data collected. Okay, so let's look at degrees of unsaturation with other elements. So organohalogens, halogens just replace hydrogen. So in our formula, that's why we subtract the number of halogens. So if we looked, for example, at C4H6Br2, so plugging it into our DU calculation, we'd have 2 times 4 plus 2 minus 2 minus 6 over 2, and that gives us a DU value of 1. Notice that halogens are counted just like hydrogens in the DU equation. Does that idea make sense? Does that idea make sense? Perfect. So what I'd like us to do in this example to apply what we've learned is I'd like you to calculate the degree of unsaturation for C5H5Cl. And if the structure has a ring and no alkyne, I'd like to, you to draw a reasonable constitutional isomer of C5H5Cl. So there are two spaces on the class whiteboard. So I'd like ideally two to three students to contribute their proposed structures. And we'll discuss this example in about three to four minutes. So your first job is to calculate DU. And your second goal is then to draw a structure that matches the formula and DU. And if you have any questions, you can share your proposed calculated DU values in the chat. And I'd like to see some structures drawn just to make sure students are comfortable applying DU in terms of how DU relates to the structure. Okay, so we have a ring system and it's drawn with two alkenes. So we have a DU of three and we have one proposed constitutional isomer. And that looks reasonable to me. Great, that's great to see. Thank you for contributing. So let's expand out our logic here. So for DU, we have two times the number of carbons minus the number of hydrogens minus the number of halogens over two. Oops, oops forgot the plus two. There we go. That gives us a DU of three. So as the students aptly noted, that tells us we have a ring and two double bonds as one possibility. Other common permutations that you could potentially draw would be regioisomers. And if you're feeling adventurous, you can even potentially draw a structure that looks something like this. So there are a range of possibilities at your disposal. As long as you have two double bonds, one ring and a car and a total of five carbons and one chlorine, you're good to go. Did anyone have another structure that they'd like to share?
Okay, so let's keep going then. And let's talk about degree of unsaturation with other elements. So oxygen is divalent. So oxygen doesn't affect the formula for equivalent hydrocarbons and oxygen can be ignored in calculating DU. So you just pretend like oxygen doesn't exist when calculating DU. So given the following formula, let's do another example where we calculate DU. And if the structure has an aldehyde, what would a reasonable constitutional isomer of the following formula be? So let's calculate our degrees of unsaturation. And then once we've calculated the degree of unsaturation, given that we need an aldehyde in our structure, let's draw a constitutional isomer. So don't be shy to share your calculated DU. And then let's try to draw out some structures on the class whiteboard. So that way we can see a range of student perspectives. So we see students noting a DU of two calculated for this formula. Let's try to now draw out a structure containing an aldehyde with a DU of two. And you can also share your responses as a picture as well. Oh, we had a reasonable proposed response. Where'd it go? If you could redraw it, that would be perfect. Ah. Does anyone have a proposed response for this structure? Don't be shy to chime in. I'd like students to get comfortable with this kind of drawing process. and then we'll discuss momentarily. Okay, so if we have a du of two, then given that we need an aldehyde, in order for us to have a du of two, with our remaining two carbons, we need a double bond. So the following structure would be reasonable for acrolein, or would be reasonable for this formula, and this structure is known as acrolein. Another possible structure that you can draw has a ring and a double bond and would look something like this. So both of these structures would be valid for, for C3H4O. Does that idea make sense to everyone? Does that idea make sense? Perfect. So this is a good point for us to, to take a break between lecture and lab, and we'll meet back 
in the same Zoom call at 1130 for laboratory, where we'll discuss um, the laboratory for the elimination reaction. So let's take a quick 10 minute break and then we'll reconvene for a lab in the same Zoom call. 